Flux is a great model with loads of potential, but when it comes to generating images with almost any art style, it can struggle a bit. For example, here are some images I tried to make using Flux in Comfy UI. I wanted a Japanese woodblock art style in each case, and as you can see, well, they are far from it. I guess a couple sort of tend a little bit in that direction, but overall, it's a no. However, using those very same prompts along with a special Laura I trained gives these results instead. That's much more like it and not a photograph style in sight. Want to train a Flux Laura for yourself? Then you've come to the right place. The easiest way to do it is just hop on over to this website, pop in a few credits, upload your images, and you're away at just $1 for every 200 steps. However, if you're a bit of a nerd like me, then you'll want to have a go at doing this yourself at home using your own computer. As it turns out, this is also pretty easy. The results you can see here are actually from my very first test using AI Toolkit, so I was slightly surprised it came out as well as it did. All you need to do is install the software, prepare your dataset, and then you're ready to start training. Installation to start with then, which thankfully is very straightforward because they give you all the commands you need right there, ready to copy and paste. The best choice of operating system for ease and support is of course Linux and hardware-wise you'll need at least 24 gig of VRAM. If you're stuck with Microsoft Windows then all is not lost however as there are commands for you to copy and paste as well. Windows needs a whole bunch more stuff too because well it's Windows. Oh and you may run into random issues along the way too. If that does happen, the Issues tab on the GitHub page is a great place to have a look around. You may find someone had a similar problem already and has posted a solution. Note this is also a work in progress, so expect stuff to change in the future. As for Mac users, not sure if it works at all, but there is a different option, perhaps a video for another day, called Simple Tuner. I haven't tested that one myself as yet, though I see it has instructions for Mac users. Anyway, back to the focus of this video, which is AI Toolkit. Whilst Linux typically comes with Python and a whole host of utilities by default, users of Microsoft Windows will likely find they are missing really basic things such as Git and even Python itself. However, whether you're using Linux or Windows, I'd still suggest you install Anaconda or similar tools such as Miniconda for all your Python needs. Conda will not only manage your environments, but you also get a heap of extra pre-compiled packages available for download too, which makes life a lot easier. For example, to download files from GitHub, you need the git command, conveniently missing on Microsoft Windows. And yes, you guessed it, git is one of those packages you can install using Conda. It's also perfect if you know you're going to be running more than one Python program environment. And yes, you will need more than one. Plus, if you've made the mistake already of downloading and installing Python separately, then don't worry, Anaconda will still play nicely. If you need any help downloading and starting your Anaconda prompt on Microsoft Windows, then do check the link in the video description for a beginner's guide. I, of course, will be using Anaconda here, though you can use Python VMV like they do in the README. OK, so you've got at least 24 gig of VRAM ready to go. You've got your Anaconda prompt open, ready for Python commands, and you've got Git installed to download stuff. Copy and paste can commence. If we take a look at the first three commands, then the first one will download the base AI toolkit software for you. Command number two will change directory and command number three will download the rest of the AI toolkit software. So let's do that now. There I've copied and pasted the first command and that downloads the software. Copying and pasting the second command will change directory and the third one downloads the rest of the software. OK, on to the next ones. Commands 4 and 5 are where I suggest using Conda, but the choice is yours as they both do much the same thing. Here I'm making a new Python 3.11 environment with the name My AI Toolkit. Feel free to pick a different name, but I'm almost certainly using the best names. Whichever name you picked, don't forget to activate that one there. I'm using Conda Activate My AI Toolkit. Command number six is optional if you're on Linux, as command number seven will just install Torch anyway. However, if you're looking for all the options, they are over on pytorch.org. So as you can see, the default pip install Torch will go with Linux, pip, Python, CUDA 12.1. I wanted to go with 12.4, so the command I copied and pasted was that one there. 
The PyTorch install does take a couple of minutes as it is quite a big download. So once that's finished, you're ready to move on to the next step. The final command then is just a typical pip install. Once that command has finished running through, then that's it, you're done. And in just a few moments without any coding, excellent. The model files will be downloaded automatically when you run it for the first time. And if you haven't done so already, you will need to sign into your Hugging Face account, accept the agreement, and put your personal secret key into a file called .env as detailed on the readme. If you're like me and use Hugging Face CLI to save your tokens, then you won't need to create that file as you're good to go already once you've accepted the license. Right, so we're on to step two now, then data set creation. Step two is probably the most difficult one as you now have to make loads of choices. What is it that you're going to do exactly? Somehow you have to get a bunch of images along with text descriptions all into a single directory. Now, I can't help you with your choice of LoRa, but I can show you how to easily make a data set all ready for training. If we have a quick look at what's in here, you can see I've got some color ones. That's quite a weird size. That's a black and white one, also quite a weird size. So they're all totally different images, but of the same style. As we'll be using the LoRa in Comfy UI later, I figured why not make a workflow in Comfy UI to help create the data set in the first place. Now, this certainly isn't the best way, but it is easy. Step one then is to copy the directory for those images. So we'll copy that and then paste it into the directory there. So paste that in, there we go. Okay, so those are the images going in. Following the workflow along, then you can see it does a couple of things. We've got Florence here, which does the captioning. I've also got a save text node there. So that saves out the text captions. And because I don't actually know what the file names are for each of the images, I'm just calling them, well, numbers. So I'm starting at zero and going up to however many images you've got. And it'll be the same for the text files as well. This bit was fun as pretty much every save image node I tried wanted to add stuff to the file name and would only save to the Comfy UI output directory. Hence, that is where I'm creating the data set. The first output there is where the text captions go and that one wants a full path. For the images, you can just use the relative path. A bit clunky, I know, but hey, it saves having to code a node for myself. And that's it. With the input and output paths set, you can just queue up as normal and produce a nice ready to use data set. If we take a quick look at the output directory, so there it is, come for UI output my new data set. You see, we've got the image zero and a text description to go along with it. So there is the image. If we open up the text file, it's describing that one as the image is a woodblock print of a wooden bridge over a body of water and all sorts of other descriptions there. So that's quite nice. A pretty simple workflow then that's easy to make and customize to your own needs. For example, you could add something like a string concat if you wanted a custom trigger word to be put into each of the descriptions. Patreon members already have access to this workflow ready made for them. And if you'd like a copy too, the link is in the video description. On to the final step then, number three, which is doing the actual training. Now, depending on what you do, this could take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. As such, I've not had time to do loads of testing, but this is the basic process. First, you need to copy the train Laura Flux file from the examples up to its parent directory. So there, the train Laura Flux 24 gig, as you can see, I'll we'll just close that one down, I've copied a load of different ones there. I've called them example one, two, three, and four. After you've copied and renamed the file, you're going to open it up in your favorite text editor. There it is. Now, the only thing you need to change in here really is line number 30, the folder path. That path is the one we had earlier, the output from Comfy UI. So once again, you can just copy and then paste it in again between those quotes. Okay, that's it. Save the file and you're done. Like it shows in the instructions, just do Python run config and then whatever your config file was, come back in about two hours and you'll have a bunch of LoRa's. However, if you want to tweak stuff, then here are some of the things you may want to play around with. Remember, these are totally optional. Save every and max steps saves to keep are two things that are sort of connected to each other. So every 250 steps, that's going to save a copy of your LoRa, which is a couple of hundred meg. And then the max save steps to keep is how many of those you're going to keep. So 
up to four there. Down in the training section, you've got the number of steps. Defaults to 2,000 and they suggest anywhere between 500 and 4,000. Obviously, the more steps you train for, the longer that's going to take. And a thousand steps on my system, a 3090, was about an hour and a quarter. The learning rate defaults to that. Now, you can increase it a little bit, I found, with styles. So 2E minus 4 and about a thousand steps did actually work quite well. But for the most part, that is the best value. Just increase the number of steps and keep the learning rate the same. Linear time steps, um, it says uncomment, but it comes uncommented by default. Experimental plus there was a typo in the code that has only just been fixed. So when I was doing my testing, I didn't have linear time steps on. Down in the sampler section are a whole bunch of things you may want to change here. So sample every 250. Again, you might want to up that a little bit if you're doing a high number of steps because you don't really want it sampling every 250 steps because it's quite slow. So if you know that all your settings are good, you're just going to train it for 4,000, maybe just sample every 1,000 and that will speed things up a little bit because you're not sampling so often. Same sort of thing with the width and height. If you make that a little bit smaller, then the generations will be quicker. Now, by default, there's quite a lot of prompts in there and they may or may not pertain to what it is that you're training. So if you're training a particular LoRa with a trigger word, like it says there, you may want to put the trigger word in to see if the prompts actually get affected. So what I did with the woodblock style is I had a few with Japanese woodblock in and then a couple without just to see if it impacted those. Everything in there is nicely commented anyway, so if you're really, really nerdy, want to change some of the other stuff, then play away to your heart's content. Once training has completed, you'll have however many files you decided to keep in a directory under Outputs. Here it is in mine then, so we've got the Outputs directory. I've got my first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and within these, you've also got samples. So those are all the steps. I remember at 250 steps, it wanted to generate, so we can have a quick look at that. So these zero ones, this is how it looked to start with, so no change. And then if we go up to the next lot, when we get to the 250, 250, there you go. See, absolutely no change. Now, because this was my very first one, I didn't actually put any of woodblock prompt things in any of these. So even when you go all the way up to 2000, there is very little change in the LoRa's. Not a massive mistake, of course. It just means that I can't see changes in the samples. Oh, well, never mind. Now. The final LoRa is the one there, so my first Flux LoRa version 1 dot safe tensors, but you've also got the intermediate ones in there, so 1000, 1250, 1500, and 1750 as well. If you want to see what they all look like, you can just take all of those and copy them into the normal place for Comfy UI. So there it is, Comfy UI models LoRa's Flux. Comfy UI supports these LoRa's out of the box, so you don't need to do anything else. Now, I like being organized, which is why I've got all my Flux LoRa's in a Flux directory. All the other ones are there. So that's why there's an extra directory I've got. So models, LoRa's, Flux, nice and easy to find them. Back over into Comfy UI then, we've got a little LoRa loader there. Now, if you don't see your new ones, don't forget to click the refresh button and then they should show up in there. Now, the other handy thing about having them in a directory is I can just use that filter list. There we go, Flux. Now I see everything with Flux in the name, as you can see. I've been doing lots of testing to see what is best. Let's take a look at my very first one. So this is where I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Literally just changed that directory, ran it through, and um, yeah. Now this is the default generation. So without the LoRa, if I generate that again, but with the LoRa up at 1.42, that's the sort of key to this one here. And then this time we get a much more Japanese woodblock art style print. I mean, that's completely different. So the issue I had to start with was that with at Laura Strength 1, it, it really didn't seem to do very much at all. So I'd suggest going up to about 1.3, 1.5 and seeing if it does indeed change. Now you can, of course, have a look at all the other ones. So if we go back and have a look at Flux. Now, if we have a look at a thousand steps, for example, and run that one through, then it's pretty similar to the original image. It's almost photo-like still. So that's a great way to test. Have I trained it enough? Have I trained it too much? Just copy all of them in there, 
flux. There we go. You can see, all right, a thousand isn't isn't enough. But how about if I do fifteen hundred instead? And now you can see it's definitely changed the style, but hasn't impacted it quite as much. So having all those different intermediate files really helps with well, how how strong do I want my LoRa? What exactly do I want it to do to my images? After my very scientific four tests, I think the default learning rate is the best. But for an art style, you can probably get away with a thousand steps if you double the learning rate. So we've got two E minus four there instead. Honestly, I haven't had time to run loads of things because it takes ages. So do let me know down in those comments if you find something that works really well. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. <laughs>